today we're going to uh, make a recipe using some leftovers and uh, wilted vegetables uh, from your fridge. One of the main reasons why we have uh, leftover vegetables or things that need to be used rapidly is because sometimes we buy too much or we don't get to use it uh, on time. So in this case today we're going to focus on stale bread, um, wilted herbs and some leftover mashed potato. We're going to start by making breadcrumbs with our stale bread. Any bread that you have in the house, I have sliced bread today, but even if it's in a loaf, you're just going to try to cut it into a smaller portion that is going to be easier to dry in the oven. All the same size. This one is a little bit crispy. But we're basically going to cut it into crouton shape and we're going to place them on a tray, ready to go in the oven. The oven doesn't have to be high because you don't want to toast this bread. What you want to do is uh, dry it enough that when you put some pressure on it, it collapses into crumbs. And you're going to let these guys cool down a little bit before you put them in a food processor uh, or a blender in this case, which is what I have. Once the bread is nice and dry, we're just going to pulse it to create our breadcrumbs that are going to be in two different parts of our dish. We're going to add them as part of the body, as a binding agent, and also as a, um, of the breading that gives it the nice cr crust. I'm just going to pulse this a couple times. And there you go, homemade breadcrumbs that you can make with some stale bread that you couldn't use on time. And now that we have our homemade breadcrumbs, uh, we're ready to start our dishes. I'm going to reach out for my leftover mashed potatoes that we saved from our meal. And we're going to add a little bit in a bowl um, to make the mix the body of our croquettes. We are going to add an egg and the homemade breadcrumbs, uh, and this will add as a binding agent. Some of our homemade breadcrumbs. Our mashed potatoes was already seasoned because it was last night's dinner. And then we're going to use a spatula to mix this. Break the egg, we'll make sure that it's the right consistency. You want to find a consistency that sticks together. So we're going to do a test I can tell that it's a little bit wet. And if it's too wet or too dry, it might just fall apart once it hits the hot oil. And this is a place where you can take your recipe in completely different directions. If you had some fish left over from last night, you can crumble it in. Uh, if you have a can of tuna or a can of um, salmon, you can drain it very well and add it in. You have a, like, the perfect potato and fish cake. Today we have some wilted greens, uh, in this case dill, that we're going to add to our croquettes. It's not really very nice to use in anything to be eaten fresh, but since we just need the flavor and the color through our croquette, we're going to use some dill today. Once we have the dill nicely chopped, it was clean before, we are going to add the herbs into the bowl and we're gonna mix them through. Once we have our mix, we're going to start building our croquettes. I am going to scoop out a little bit of this mix that we made, and I'm gonna take some cheese. Today I have cheddar, but this can be any cheese, semi-hard that you have around the house. Semi-hard because the soft cheese will melt really quickly, but in this case, what we're gonna do is work around the heart of cheese for our croquette. Make sure that the cheese is completely covered, nice and dry. You can do whatever shape you want. We're gonna aim for a little bit of an oval ball or football style croquette. And we're going to continue to build our croquettes until we've used all of our leftover mashed potatoes or all the cheese that we had. making sure that the cheese is covered by the body of potato so it doesn't leak out and melts with the heat as we cook it. 
until we are ready to get started with the breading process. Now that we have our croquettes built, we're going to set up a breading station. For this, you can use any flour, whole wheat flour, if you want to add some fiber to your diet, uh, but any flour you have laying around the house is fine. Just a little bit is going to be the first step in our coating. The, the flour will add the egg, the second step, to stick to the croquette. And then on the third step, our homemade breadcrumbs will be our final stage. And the egg is going to allow the breadcrumb to uh, finish the coating. I usually, depends on what I'm doing, I add seasonings in this step. Salt and pepper, salt and pepper, salt and pepper. You can add some herbs in here if you, if you like that look. Uh, but basically, this is another opportunity to give that crust uh, a little bit of flavor. Here, I like to work with one wet hand and one dry hand, so I don't make a mess and I cross-contaminate all my ingredients. So I'm going to, and it, whatever works for you. I'll start with my left, and now that this is a wet croquette, this will be my wet hand. I'm going to roll it, make sure that it's nicely coated all the way around so the egg can stick. You shake it a little bit. Pat it back into shape, and we're going to go into the beaten egg. And we're going to use a slotted spoon, very gently. This is a delicate uh, potato ball, really. Mashed potato has no structure, so you have to be very gentle. And we're going to drain it out with a slotted spoon, get the excess. You see how I have one messy hand, but my other one is completely clean, so I can continue to work without risking putting raw egg into the rest of my product or my table or my tools. We're going to roll this potato now with my dry hand because the breadcrumbs are dry. And we're gonna continue this process to make sure that our croquette is fully covered and keeping some kind of shape before it goes in the fryer. I have our uncooked croquettes ready to go. We're gonna move on to the stove. We're going to heat up about an inch, if you have, of oil in a small pot. You can do a test to see when it's ready by throwing a couple of a sprinkle of breadcrumbs. If they sizzle, they're ready to go. To start cooking them, we're going to lower them with a slotted spoon very gently into the hot oil. We're going to let it go for a couple minutes and turn it around a few times to make sure that it's completely golden brown all the way through. You want the potato croquette to basically warm through and melt the cheese inside. And then once it looks golden brown all the way around, we're going to take them out with your slotted spoon and lean them on some paper towel to drain that excess oil. So there you go. Leftover mashed potato croquettes with a heart of cheese. Very simple recipe. I hope I inspire you today to use your leftovers, your wilted vegetables, your still bread, giving them a second chance before, they, uh, before you're ready to toss them out. Thank you very much for watching, and please check secondharvest.ca learn for more videos and information.